and why didn't that already open? I thought I had that open. There we go. Let's open that up. Um, so we've come really far in this class, and I just want to say to everybody that you've done a great job. You're at week seven. Next week is the end of the class, and you've made it this far, and you um, should be proud of yourselves because this is not an easy class. We throw a lot of stuff at you in a very short period of time. So just wanted to say that for everybody. Now to this week. Module 7 is all about data storage. Um, everything on the computer is a file. Everything. The keynote that I'm using right now is a file. The operating system consists of files. Um, you know, the Python interpreter is a file. The, the, a Microsoft, Microsoft Word, the application itself, is a file. Everything is a file. I apologize for that thing in the background. Um, sorry. I don't know what I said. So, everything's a file in a computer. That's pretty much all there is. And they all have to interact with the operating system. So, what can you do with these things called files? Well, we've talked about it before. We're going to talk about it again tonight. CRUD, create, read, update, delete. Just like you can create, read, update a list, same with the dictionary, same with a string, same concept, except now we're doing it with something that is persisted. Everything we have done up till now is in the computer memory. It is not persisted to a database. It is not written out anywhere. The minute the program stops, all the data vanishes. So what we're talking about is persisting data. And we do that by creating a, a file on the disk. We can access it or read it. We can update it, which it means just we can change the file. And we can remove it. So we can do CRUD to the file. OK. Um, Linux, Mac, Windows all handle files differently. The operating systems are different. Although Mac and Linux are pretty close, um, Windows is not. So we have this thing called Python. We have these PY files. Now the wonderful thing about Python, like a few other languages, it's called write once, uh, run many. So I can write my Python script and I can run it on my Windows machine. I can run it on my Mac. I can run it on a Linux machine. And I know this because I do this. I, I, I write Python code for my own personal stuff on my Mac, because I have a Mac here at home. For work, I have a Windows machine, and I have a boatload of Linux VMs. So I write Python for all those. And you can take the Python and move it to another operating system as long as it has the interpreter. Now that's very powerful because in my younger days when I wrote C and C++ we would actually have to recompile it between operating systems. So if I had written C and C++ code that ran on Solaris and I wanted it to run on Unix I would have to recompile it at a minimum and sometimes rewrite portions of the code because they wouldn't work the same. So the fact that you can write your script and take it to any place is very, very powerful. And it's one of the things that companies like about this. Um, one of the ways that Python does this is it removes you from the operating system. So you have the operating system, which deals with the hardware. RAM, all of that stuff, then 
for Python and a few other languages, you have an interpreter in between. You have a, it's like a layer cake. Operating system, interpreter, language. So because of that layer of the interpreter, you don't have to worry about things like what's happening with the operating system. So what's a file? Well, a file is a couple of things, really. A file has properties. It's got a name, it's got a size, and it's got a location on disk, okay? Um, this is called metadata, and it is data about the file. Every single file has metadata. Um, and you get this by creating a file object. Um, so opening a file. You can create, read, update. So what do we do? We got some new stuff going on here. First of all, we have this function called open. Well, sorry. If you look at this line of code, we have my file. My file is a variable. I know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. To the right-hand side of the single equal sign, I have this function called open. I have this my first file.txt and an R. So what does all this mean? My file, as a variable, um, will contain the metadata about the file. It doesn't contain the data in the file. It contains how do I get to the file? How do I get to the data in the file? It doesn't actually, the open function does not actually read data. It just provides a doorway into the file. So we have the open function. This provided by Python, you don't have to do anything special. It gives you the file descriptor back. It gives you the pointer to that file that will allow you to get into it. The first argument to the open function is a fully qualified path to the file, unless it's in the same directory as the running program. That just means you're going to give it, you may give it a directory structure. You may not. It may be in the exact same place that you're running the file from. Mostly that won't be the case, so you will have to give it the path. And then we have a mode. The mode, it tells Python what it's allowed to do with the file. You can read it, which means I can't change it. I can only open it. I can read a lot of stuff from it, but I can't make a change to it. Write means I'm just going to open it and start writing. I don't care if anything was there before because I'm just, it's just going to automatically delete it. That's what the W modifier does, and the W mode does. Append means start at the, right after the last line, just start adding things. And binary is um, a way to do things that are not necessarily human readable. A lot of the files that you actually deal with are binary files and encoded files. So, then there is the thing that I'm going to harp on for the next hour, close. If you open it, you have to close it. Why? Because every time you open a file, you use up a system resource. There, in all operating systems, there is only allowed to be so many files open at once. This is a bit, pretty large number. But if you're running a complex system, you may have lots of files open all the time. So you have to manage your resources. Every time you open a file, you have to close a file. Now, it's a little different but from open and close. Open just is a function call. Close has to be called on the file descriptor. So I will say my file.close, and that will tell Python to close the file that was associated with the variable my file that I opened. So if it already exists in the location specified, Python will open it. If a file does not exist in the location you're telling it to go, Python will create it when using W or R modes. Okay, and at the bottom of all these slide, you're going to see opening files uses a system resource. System resources are finite. Remember to close. 
just like, um, you know, I harped on colons for a long time. I'm harping on close this week. Okay, how do you read data from a file? So my file, as I said before, is not the contents of the file. It's just a doorway. Just like I can go through a doorway, you know, into a kitchen from my living room, this is a doorway into the file. So um, to get the data out of a file, I have to do some things, okay? The first thing I can do, and there, there are different ways to get the data out of the file and into the program because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take data that is in a file, move it into the program so you can do something with it. Um, so we have my file as a variable. We know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. My file is not the contents of the file. It is simply a way to get to the file. How do I get to the contents of the file? Well, using that my file, that, that file descriptor, I can use a function called read. Now, again, this is my file dot read. So I'm taking the file descriptor and I'm telling Python to read from this particular file descriptor because I might have lots of file descriptors. Read just provides Python, it says get me all the contents of the file, everything. Now this is very handy, but if you're dealing with really, really, really large files, it's not practical. For this class, with the amount of stuff you're dealing with, it's fine. But just let you know, out in the bigger world when we're dealing with huge data sets, reading everything in isn't always an option because there's not enough RAM on the system. Okay, so when I tell it to read, it pulls out, this is this is a text file with two lines. Now if you notice in that green box, it says this is a text file and then slash n with two lines. That's because when I typed my information into my file, I typed this is a text file, I hit the enter key, and then I typed with two lines. That escape sequence, the slash n, means that there is a line break between this is a text file and with two lines. And then I'm going to close when I'm all done. Now, what the Meister does is it takes all the contents of read and puts it into that variable. So if I close the file after I have read the contents, I still have the contents. I don't have to worry about losing the contents when I close the file. So, um, Read, let's see, retrieve the contents of the file as a list. This is actually uh, pretty handy, and we're going to have the separator as a new line. So that gives me each line as a different element in the list. And again, we've got my file equal open, my first file, and I'm going to read it. This time I'm going to use a function called read lines. Read lines does just that. It's going to assume that there is a new line at the end of every line that you want and it's so it's going to pull those out just like when you have when you're using split on a string very similar this is splitting the contents of the file based on a new line separator so read lines um, and that that's just provided by Python and again, you have to tell it which file descriptor to use. So that's why it's my file dot read lines, because I'm telling it I want to read the lines from the my file file descriptor. So what it's going to do is it's going to give me a list. My list is going to be this is a text file as the first element with two lines as the second element. And then we're going to close it as always. So let's go out and look at a little code, and yes, 
Is there part two for this class? There is not an advanced, um, there's not an advanced Python class that I know of at SNHU. Um, read lines inside a loop will work really well, Stephen, but there's something that will work better, and we will get to that. Um, Python, Python gives you some stuff that's even better. So let's go look at some Python and where it's like, let me see, write with, try to write, read. read. So this is just read.py. Okay, so let's make this big. What does this say? I have my file equals open many lines.txt. Here's many lines.txt. And then I'm going to read all the lines, and then I'm going to print them, and then I'm going to close them. So, let's go to, I hate that this is in an alphabetical order. Okay, so let's open many lines. So I just have line one, two, three, and four here. That's all I have. Um, and if I run, or I debug read because we all know I like to debug things. Here, let's go down to frames and variables and look at your variables. Okay, I have my file equal open many lines.txt. So the default is for reading, so I'm going to open my file. Now, look at all this stuff. I really wish I could make this bigger down here. My file, you'll see something called text IO wrapper. That is just telling it what the input output stream is. And we'll talk a little bit more about streams and buffers in just a couple of minutes. And the IO text wrapper has a name. This is its metadata, okay? The name of the file is manylines.txt and the mode is R. Now you'll notice on line one I did not put an R. R is the default way of opening a file in Python. So if you don't want to tell it to do anything special, it's just going to let you read it. It's not going to let you write it. Okay? And it also has the encoding as UTF-8. So this is all metadata about a file. Plus, here's more metadata about a file. There is a lot of stuff going on here. Now we're not going to talk about all this stuff in the class, but we are going to talk about buffers in just a few minutes. But I wanted you to get an idea. We haven't even read a line from the file yet, and there's all this information you have about the file. Now right now in this class, we don't care a lot about that information, but if you are starting to really do some heavy file handling, which some programs do, then this information can be important. So, excuse me, I'm going to read the lines from the file. I'm going to close that. And now I see that I have this list. Lines. Lines has line one, line two, line three, and line four. Now you'll notice when you, when you look at this that it has broken it up, but it didn't take away that new line. Because unlike split, which is going to remove the, the delimiter, read lines isn't going to remove the new line. So you're going to, in your code, if you don't want that new line, you're going to have to go through and get rid of it. So that's just a difference, and it's something to note. Okay, so now I'm going to print them. So I just printed out the... Um, I just printed out the list and now I closed it and I'm done with the file. So that's pretty simple on how to do that. Now, if I didn't close it, I wouldn't I wouldn't get an error right now. But if I'm running a large program that's running for a long time and I'm opening files and I'm not closing them, eventually I'm going to run out of file descriptors and the system is going to probably go belly up. So that is how you read lines from a file. 
So now you can read it line by line, which is better. It's not the, it's not the most optimum yet, but it is better, especially if you have a large file. So in this case, I have my same two-line file, and this is the for loop. So I have four line, and line is just a variable name, in my file. My file is the, is the file descriptor, and what I'm doing is I am printing each line. And this is pretty handy. So I'm going to say this is a text file. And I'm going to go back up with two lines. I think I left something out of this. Sorry. And then I'm going to close. So let's go to read each line.py because I think I need to check myself. Read each line. Okay, so here we go. I have many lines again. And I didn't. Um, okay, let me get this. Read each line. So I'm going to debug it. So I didn't bother to stop on the file open, but we can see down here in variables that I have my file again, same metadata, same file descriptor, and now I've gone into the file, the for loop because of um, the way Python helps you, because this, is, this is, doesn't happen this way in a lot of programming languages. You can just throw a file descriptor at a for loop, and Python knows what to do with it, which is really, really nice. Because in Java, you can't, you can't just say, here's a file descriptor, understand what I'm supposed to be doing with it in this loop. That is not the way it works in Java. But Python does. Python makes things very, very handy for you. So we can see that line is the first line from my file, which is manylines.txt. So I can just step over this, go to the console. It's going to go line one, line two, line three, and line four. And then I'm going to close my file descriptor. So if I look here at variables, OK, and I close my file descriptor, I should have put a print line after it, because it's going to say that it's closed is true. So that's how you do it in a for loop. There is, uh, hold on, we're almost there. Um, closing a file, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. If you don't close it, you will eventually run out of file descriptors, which means your program won't work anymore. Um, files or system resources. Opening pulls a resource, close returns it. You always want to return it. Um, the other thing that close does is it writes anything to a file that you've told it to put in the file. And that's not always intuitive at first, because you're like, well, I just told it to write a line to the file. Why isn't there a line in the file? That's because file I.O the writing of data to a disk is the most expensive thing from a processing standpoint that you can do on a computer. Period, end of sentence. It has been that way since I've been programming. And until we come with, up with the next quantum leap in computers, it's going to be that way. Disk I.O., even to, to solid state disks, is expensive from a processing standpoint. So. What most programming languages do, and Python does it, is it buffers it in RAM. And then only at certain times, like if the buffer gets filled up, filled up, if you tell it to do it, or you close the file, will it actually write. So why is this important? It's important because if you don't close a file and you've got stuff in the buffer, that buffer may never write to the disk. If it doesn't write to the disk, you're going to lose data eventually, especially if something else goes out and uses that file. 
Okay, so you must always look, close a file when finished accessing it. All right, we've been reading, now let's write. Okay, so I'm going to open my file, and this time I'm going to open it with a W. And this is just my empty file.txt. And it actually doesn't matter if it's empty. That single W will, will just overwrite any data in the file. It's like deleting all the contents of a file. So I, I still have to open it. Before I can write to a file, I still have to get the file descriptor. That open is the beginning of everything when it comes to files. OK, so I'm going to write a line to a file. Great, except there's this thing called a buffer in the middle. That buffer is there so that you're not writing every character or every few characters to the file itself. You're doing this in batches at times that oftentimes you don't even know about. Python will simply decide when it's going to write. Now you can tell it when. You can say, hey, flush this buffer. But this buffer isn't something that you program. It's something that Python does whether or not you like it. So my write, and by the way, my file.write is how you're going to write to a file, or one of the ways you're going to write to a file. And I'm just putting a string in a file. And then I'm going to write the second line. And I'm going to close. And when I close, at that point, Python says, OK, take everything in the buffer, write it to disk, and then I'm done. So that's another reason why closing is important. You're not actually writing into the file. You're writing into a place in RAM that later on gets put in the file. Um, yes, if you can open a file for read-write by using R, W. So you can make a file re read and writable very easy. We don't really do a lot of that in this class, but in my day job, I do a lot of opening and reading and writing of files. OK, let's say I got a really big file. And I want to flush, I want, I want to take everything in the buffer and put it into my file. And I don't want to leave it up to Python to do it. Because Python will do it. It'll, it'll wait till the buffer gets close to full. And then it'll write stuff. But maybe I need it written sooner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush the buffer. So in this case, I'm just taking a for loop because I just want to write a lot of stuff to a file. And just for, for counter in range. And I'm just going to write big file a bunch of times. So when I write big file, it's just going to put 100 big files into this, except I don't know why that error did that. Every 10 lines, I want to flush the buffer. I don't want to wait till I get to 100. I want to flush it. So what I will do is I will call the flush command. Again, it's done on the file descriptor. And flush will basically say, OK, take everything you have, put it into it, and you can put that in a loop. And then when the loop is done and you close the file, anything that is left in that buffer will be written to the file. So let's go look at a couple of pieces of code. So write.py here is, take those out. OK. So I'm going to find empty file.txt. Uh, my empty file. There we go. So right now it's not empty. But let's see what happens when I write to it. So let me set up the configuration. There we go. So I'm going to open this file for writing. And 
uh, myemptyfile.txt has these three things in it. So let's see if they're still there when I'm done. So I'm just going to debug it. I'm going to open up the file for writing. In my variables, I see that I have the same text.io wrapper. It's emptyfile.txt for writing. Encoding is UTF-8. So I can't read from this file. Right now, I can only write to it. So if I open up my emptyfile.txt, same file, everything is gone. When I created that file descriptor, Python basically went out and said, anything that was there at this spot, just get rid of it and start anew. So I'm going to use the write command, and I'm going to write line one. Let's go back and look at my empty file. Nothing in it. I'm going to go and I'm going to write line two. My empty file, still nothing in it. Now I'm going to write new line, my empty file, still nothing there. But when I close the file, I now have line one, line two, and new line. That's what closing does. You will not lose data if you close. So now let's look at flush. Okay, this is pretty much what we just saw. And I have my big file.txt. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. Doesn't matter. I'm going to be, oh, where's flush? I'm going to be overwriting it anyway because I'm using the write command. And so this is it's relatively simple. We're going to open it, and then we're just going to let it run. And every 10 lines, it's going to flush. So I've got my big file.txt. I'm going to put a breakpoint there. Let's add the configuration uh, flush. And then we're going to debug it. So I've opened a file, or I'm about to open a file, mybigfile.txt. That's what it has in it. When I step, open, step over, it no longer has anything. So we've established what write does. So now for 100 lines, I'm going to write big file and then just add the counter. Okay? So the first one is always going to get written. And then we're going to keep going. So let's just look at my big file.txt. Right now I only have that first line that I wrote on the flush. So let's continue on till we get to our first flush. So right now, I still have only one line in that file. I'm going to step over that flush, and all of a sudden, I have all these lines in the file. And that's because I told it to write them to the file. I said, it's OK at this point to, to take that expensive operation and send it to disk. So, whoops, wrong button. There we go. So, 20, we're only at 10. Now we're at 20, 50, 60. And you'll see the file just keep getting bigger every time we hit the flush. So that's what flush does. It takes it out of that that um, invisible buffer, and it writes it to your file. Now, managing a file with with. With is created by Python just for use in managing files. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to close it will do the closing for you. So with is a keyword, and it um, it's a loop. So when you use the with keyword, you are creating a loop. What you are going to do is you're going to loop over the contents of a file and do something with it. Usually read it in, 
make some modifications, and potentially write it back out. So that is what with is. It's a loop, and it's specifically there to go through a file. So the other keyword here is as. So if you have a with, you have an as. Just like when you have a for, you often have an in. With a with, you have as. So with openmytextfile.txt, as my file says, Python, go out and write and open this file called mytextfile.txt and assign the file descriptor to a variable called my file. That's what this does. That's what Python is tell what you're telling Python to tell the operating system to do. Okay. So my file is in fact a file object, so that will be how we get to the data in the file, how we handle everything associated with the file is using the file object the same way we've used the file object in the last eight slides and in the code we've seen. So now I'm just going to read a line. Line equal my file dot read line. And my apologies, that L should not be capitalized. I obviously was writing in Java at that moment. So if I read line, I'm going to read line one. That's what the first thing is going to be. And then I'm going to go back up to the top of the loop. And I'm going to read another line. And I'm going to print out line two. Now, file closes automatically after exiting a width. So that's the nice thing about a with statement. It does the resource management for you. You don't have to remember. Now the downside of doing with is that you have to you have to be inside that while loop. Sorry, you have to be inside that with loop to access the data unless you're going to kind of store it and return it from something. So you have to be careful using this because you want to make sure you actually have all your data. But um, with is when I'm when I'm accessing files, with is usually how I'm accessing them. Um, especially if I want to process things line by line. So um, that was that. Okay, so these are the rules. Um, it with will process um, the file until it reach the, reaches the end of file. And by the way, if you ever see an EOF output on the command lighting line while you are writing code, that means you've come to the end of the file and something was wrong. Okay, so working with the operating system. Sorry, backspace. All right, I've already said that Windows, Linux, and Macs are different operating systems. Every operating system handles files differently. It just, it just, they just do. Um, Python neutralizes it. Languages like Python and Java neutralize that. They allow, that they have that layer, that interpreter layer for Python in the middle. And it basically allows you to not have to worry about slashes. That's the way I like to put it. But there are lots of other things, but the example we're going to go through here is you don't have to worry about the slashes. Um, and this is one of those things that help you run it on different operating systems. It'll help you run your script on different operating systems. So now we're going to switch for just a quick second, and we're going to talk about modules. Modules are a library of code. That's what they are. They're a Python. A module is just a Python file with a little bit of special nomenclature in it. Um, they can provide all kinds of things. Um, and there are, there are just thousands and thousands available. One of them is the OS module. The OS module is something that a lot of people rely on. Um, I know I use it a lot if I am doing file I.O. in Python. And here's just some external resources to help you with that. Well, why are we talking about the OS module? 
We're talking about the OS module because that is the thing that neutralizes operating system functionality for files in Python. So the OS module is very important. It has done all of the stuff for you. So the first thing you're going to do with a module is you're going to import it. What does import mean? Import basically tells Python that in the running interpreter space, pull in this file and all of its code because that means I can access it. Now, it's not going to overwrite your file. It's not physically going to change your Python script. What it's doing is it's making this chunk of code available. And that's what we do when we're importing OS. So um, OS is just the name of the module. It could have been astronomy. Um, it could have been PyCurl. Could have been lots of things. You actually can import um, a Python library for IBM Watson, specifically the text-to-speech and the speech-to-text. So those are, some, those are some things you can import. So here I have this file path equals os.join, and then I've got home, L. Shannon, module 6, lecture.key. So what does join do? os.join means you don't have to worry about the slashes. So if it is Linux, I'm going to have my friendly Linux slashes. And if it is Windows, I'm going to have my Windows slashes, which are the other way. So that's just one thing that OS can do. There are lots of other things. Like if you have to walk through directories um, on a file system, you want to use the OS module because you don't have to worry about how the directories are structured in terms of the operating system. You can basically just walk through the directories. You can say, no, get me the next directory. What are the files in this directory? Things like that. Okay, binary data. It's another form of data. Um, a lot of data is stored in binary format and encoded. We don't get into encoding in this class, but imagery, movies, audio, Microsoft Office, um, a lot of uh, files are stored are written in binary. So binary has a special little nomenclature. So you have this B before the string. So my bytes equal B colon bytes. B tells Python that it is acting as a binary. So, and it treats the string as, it's going to treat this string as a binary. And I can print it and I can type it. Um, and I don't really do a lot with binary files because it's, it's kind of a uh, something good to know that there's this thing called binary, but it really doesn't affect us in what we're doing for the remainder of the class. So I mention it. I don't spend a lot of time on it. Okay, I'm going to spend more time on comma-separated value files. CSV module, so this is another thing you would import, is great for comma-separated value files. And most importantly, it's required for lab 7.8. Um, and what's a comma separated value file? It's just strings and um, numbers and whatever you want separated by commas. That's all a comma separated value file is. So here's a quick example. And we're going to create a list from the contents of words.csv, removing duplicate words as you build the list. OK. So I've got this import CSV. So I'm importing the comma separated value module. And I'm creating an empty dictionary. And I'm going to use my with statement. And I'm going to say open words.csv as words. So my file descriptor will be words. And I'm going to say content equal CSV reader words delimiter. So you'll notice. I'm not using the file descriptor right now to read a line from it. 
I'm using the CSV module reader function to read words in, read things in from the word, words file descriptor, should have named that something different. And it's going to be comma separated. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to say for row in content, just in case there are multiple lines, there could be. For counter in range, length of row, so everything in the row. So you'll notice that right now I'm working with lists because that's what CSV gave me. And then I'm going to say if row counter not in word list, make sure the word is not already in the list. I'm going to append, and then when I'm done, I'm going to print the word list. So let's take a look at this code so we can get a little bit closer idea. Okay, no problem. Good luck, Daniel. Okay, so we're going to do uh, comma separated. Okay, so I'm going to import the CSV module. I have an empty word list, someplace to store it, and then I'm going to walk through it. So let's do that. Let's start off with looking at words.csv. So this is all words.csv. They're just comma separated strings. And I'm going to go back. I shouldn't have as many things open. Comma separated. And I'm going to run it. Let me edit the configuration comma separated. Okay, so let's debug it. So I've imported I've imported CSV and you won't see any real indication of that. What you will see is if CSV doesn't exist you'll get an error and we'll do that error in just a minute. And then I say with open words.csv as words so I can see down here that I do in fact have a file descriptor called words and that it points to words.csv. I've opened it for reading. So now what do I have? So I'm going to say for row in content. Well, if I look at my variable content here, it will say it's a CSV reader. And there's all this interesting stuff, but it doesn't look like a normal list. It doesn't look like a normal list because it's not a normal list. The CSV reader, sorry, the CSV module and the reader function have taken over and we're just going to be using this object created from CS, CSV Reader to do a for loop over, which is interesting because it doesn't look like a list to me. But that's the power of being able to import a module. I don't have to understand everything that the CSV module is doing to use it and to use it effectively. So let's step over. So I now have my content, and I've got a counter. Now you'll see my counter is zero, and I'm going to say for row of counter not in word list, and now I'm going to append it to my word list. Now if I go up here, or down here, where is word list, now you see the word cat is in the word list. So even though the, the CSV reader did not return what I would think of as a list. It is, in fact, working as a list. And so I'm just going to keep going until I have everything in my word list. And you'll notice it's only putting things in there once. And then I print it and I went too fast. I apologize. So cat in the hat hand. So it only did things once, and I used the CSV Reader for it. Well, what's the big deal about CSV Reader? If you've ever saved an Excel spreadsheet as comma-separated values, then a CSV Reader is handy. Additionally, you may have formats that you create yourself which are comma-separated or otherwise delimited. And 
if you're using Python, you can use CSV Reader and just use a different delimiter. Because you will see here on line 6 that delimiter equals colon, comma, colon. It didn't have to be that way. Sorry, quote, comma, quote. It didn't have to be that way. It could have been colon delimited. Very similar. Looks almost identical except there's a little delimiter of colon there. So it could have been just about anything that you wanted it to be, in as long as it's a single character, to delimit it. So how are we doing for time? Yeah. Okay. Let us keep going because we're about to get into the real lab. So this is just... Uh, an example of some of the stuff you might need for 7.9. So you're going to have to read something in from the file. In this case, for just this example, I'm just putting it in a list. So I'm going to basically create a dictionary from the contents of a file. So basically what I'm doing is I am, and, and the way the file is structured is it just has strings in it. There, or, or it just has a comma separated value file, but there's nothing to tell me that it's a key and a delimiter. It is not an already formatted type of file. It's just kind of free form. So I've got name comma Lisa, answer comma 42, and amount 3.14. So, and I want to turn this into a dictionary. So how do I do that? Well, it's a list, and I can get that in a couple different ways. If it's a CSV file, I can get the information and put it into a list. If it's not a CSV file, if it's just something I can do read lines on, then I can turn it into a list that way. Um, so basically, I'm going to do a for loop over whatever my contents are. And I specifically am going to do it using counter in range because I'm going to need that information in the next line. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, Am I about to step over the end of this list? And I do that not by saying, you know, is counter greater than the length or greater than or equal to the length. I say it's counter plus one less than the length of the content. If that is true and I have, and I know I'm on an even number because that's what counter modulo two equal equal zero is, then I've got all my data. And I can double check to make sure contents of counter is not in my dict. And then I'm just going to add it all. And then when I am done, I'm going to print it out. So that's all this does. But what it's allowing you to do, and let's just go out and look. I think I've got this code here. Um, this one. So this is that particular um, script. And if we look at this real quick, um, hold on. there we go. And I debug it. I have got my list here, and I've got my empty dictionary. So what do I have? I have counter which is going to be 0, and 0 plus 1 is going to be less than the length of contents, and then counter, 0 modulo 2 is going to be 0. No, it's not. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, contents of counter is not in my dictionary because there's nothing. So now I'm going to add something to my dictionary, and because Python knows what to do if it's a dictionary, it added name colon Lisa because I had contents of counter and contents of counter plus one. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Counter is one now. So it did not go into the, it did not get to line six because I was at an odd number. So counter is now two. I'm at an even number. I'm going to go down. I'm going to add it to my dictionary. Counter is three. It is an odd number. Counter is four. I'm going to add it to my dictionary. Counter is five, and I'm done. So now I can print it out, 
and didn't do it on. So that's what we see. So this is this is you're you're converting from one format to another, um, and it is something you will have to do for 7.9. And I have to just say honestly that I don't know why we make the files the file labs as uh, long as they are, especially 7.9. It's like you have a second project due um, in week seven, and I don't think that's necessarily the best thing to do, but that's me done with my rant. Um, so 7.8 is word frequencies, and this is where you're going to want to use the CSV. So I'm going uh, to input my file name. I'm going to create an empty word list. I'm going to use CSV file. Uh, so I'm going to use with here. But you'll notice that gray box. That's because uh, pseudocode is supposed to be language independent. So, but the, the little bubble says this is where you're going to use with. So that's what you're going to use. And then basically I'm going to get the results of the stuff from the CSV write, reader. And for the row in the user file, for index in the length of row, if the row at index is not already in the list, I'm going to output the value and I'm going to append it to the word list. So that is 7.8 and it is specifically using the comma separated value. You have to use that or it's not going to work quite right. Well, it probably will, but it will cause, um, yeah, it's just extra work. That's all, just extra work. So 7.9 is sorting TV show, uh, shows. And we have a part one and a part two. There's a lot going on here. Let's see. So I even go back to like the twos to tell you what you have to do. So there's going to be opening and closing files and opening and closing files. So it's not just a single file. So you're going to create some variables. And then for the first item in the list, add every other item in list as a key. So remember what we just did with the to dict stuff? So we have key value pairs. The uh, element at index 0 is the key. The value at index 1, the index 1 in the list is uh, the value. So it's even is key, odds are values. So um, so we're going to create this list. Now we're going to have a for loop, and we're going to have this little temp list, which is an empty list. And we're going to have to run through in this for loop creating this dictionary. Um, and you have to remember to remove the new lines just to let you know. And this is something we didn't do much of, but in 2.10, there is a fun, it does talk about the strip function, and the strip will remove things. So you just need to go out and look up what the strip function does. So now you've created this dictionary from the list that you read in from a comma-separated value file. And now you're going to sort it. So you can do, you can sort the list using sorted. So now you have it sorted by keys. And so after all that, um, and you're going to deal, you're going you're gonna to split it up in a couple of different ways. After all of that, you are then going to write two different files. So we do all this work to get to the basic uh, contents of this class. So, um, so yeah, so you're going to write two files in a very specific way. So do I have, thought I might have, let me see. No, I don't think I have an example of that one. I thought I did, right, with, try to write it, no not it. Yeah, I don't think I have one that's that complex. 
Um, but it, it is long, but the pseudocode does take you through it step by step. Just remember that when you're talking about like a CSV file, you want to use the with keyword, with as. So, lo and behold, I'm only three minutes over. Um, does anybody have any questions? Are you guys okay with handling files? Do you want to go over anything? You missed part two, you mean of 7.9, Harold? Okay. Well, I'll be putting these up. Um, when I put the um, video up on YouTube, there are also links to all of the pseudocode. So they'll be up there, but there's two. So that's part two. Um, but they're all up there. Does anybody else have any other questions? No problem, Harold. You might get out of here close to 10 tonight. No problem. Um, I hope these videos have been helpful. Um, I will not be here next week just as another reminder. But there is a video from Module 8 from the last couple of terms that you can also watch. So I'm going to end the recording and